Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, and I'm a professor of mathematics at Kissimmee River College in Sacramento, California. And this is another select example in integral calculus. Uh, in this example, we have a base region uh, defined by the points 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1. So it's a triangular region. And we're going to plant on top of that region equilateral triangles whose cross sections are perpendicular to the y axis. So let's go ahead and draw that first of all, and then uh, we'll. Uh, use that drawing to help us build some type of way to compute the volume of this uh, solid. Which, by the way, I should probably say it's not the volume of the region, it's the volume of the solid. Now, as you can see, I'm not the best artist in the world, so I don't do three-dimensional drawings very well. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that if you're bad with three-dimensional drawings like me, you could still survive. Um, so what I do is I generally break all calculus drawings up into a top-down view versus a side view. And here's a top-down view, and we happen to see that there's our border of our region, and we know that our slice uh, is going to be perpendicular to the uh, y-axis. So let me go ahead and draw a single slice in there, and then we'll take a side view of that slice. So there we have a, a slice, and uh, it's kind of a large slice, that's fine. And I see that this is going to be a width here on the slice of a delta y. It's a thick enough slice that I can see it, so I call it a delta y instead of a dy. Um, and then we'll do a Riemann sum in the end to get uh, the dy. But the side view, which I'll go ahead and draw on here, uh, just to get a visual, will help us out a lot in finding uh, an area of that slice. Now remember, uh, we want to add up all these slices, and each of these slices represents a volume. It has a thickness, and it has a surface area. You can see this is an equilateral triangle. It should have a surface area. And so what we want to do is find an area. When I say surface area, by the way, I mean a front-facing surface area. Because some people will argue, wait, a surface area means that you have an area up front, an area on the back side, and an area of the sides. Um, I'm just talking the front facing two dimensional surface area. So in this case, we need to find the area of this triangle. And then we have a width of a triangle and then we'll, that'll be our ith triangle. This is actually at a height of y sub i. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and figure out what this length here is. Because remember the area of a triangle, the area of this, this i slice, should equal one half the base of this ith slice times the height of the ith slice. That's the area of a, of a uh, triangle. And in this case, if you look at the base of that, uh, you can easily see that it's going to be whatever this x value here is. That's, that's going to be, and I'll call that x sub i, even though it's not really an x sub i. But that's really what it is. It's, it's, it's that length right there. And the height here, we can use a little bit of, uh, or recall some of our uh, good old algebra or trig, whichever you prefer. We should recall that uh, if this is an equilateral triangle, then all these angles should be 60 degrees. And therefore, this half of that angle should be 30 degrees. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle right there. And so I could say, well, if this whole distance was x sub i, even though it's not really an x sub i, I call that half distance an x sub i over 2. And then we happen to know from uh, trigonometry that well, this also will be x sub i, and this will be the square root of 3 times that x sub i over 2. So square root of 3 times x sub i over 2. That's what the height here is. So let's go ahead and write that in there. Area is 1 half base times height, the base being x sub i, and the height being square root of 3 over 2 times x sub i. I'll write that down. Maybe I'll use a better pen here. So this implies the area of that ith slice is 1 half. The base, which we've just said is x sub i, and the height, which by trig, or maybe a little bit of algebra, whichever you prefer to call it, is root 3 over 2 x sub i. Uh, and then to clean this up, I'll call that root 3 over 4 x sub i being squared. Okay. So that's the area. We have a width. So therefore, the volume of that ith slice is the area of the ith slice times delta y. 
right, little wiggle in y, which will give me uh, root 3 over 4 x sub i squared delta y. Well, here's the problem. I'm adding up, I know my wiggle is going to be in y, so I'm going to be adding the slices from y equals 0 to y equals 1. Uh, but the problem is, uh, I, this function right here, this x value right here, is not in terms of y. So I have to find a way to relate x and y together. And that's always found by looking at the border, which defines the edge of your region here. So this thing I'm highlighting yellow, I don't know if you can see that, but that thing I'm highlighting yellow there, that's the edge. That's, that's kind of the varying edge that tells us how large our base is. So I'd like to find an equation for that in x and y. That's pretty easy to do because if you look at it, it's just a line that has a slope of negative 1 and has been lifted up 1 unit. So in other words, that's y equals a negative x plus 1. All right, great. I'll add x to both sides, subtract y from both sides, and this tells me that x should equal 1 minus y, which is very nice because that way I can replace the x sub i squared with a 1 minus y sub i squared and we'll be good. So that volume at the ith slice should be root 3 over 4 times the quantity 1 minus y sub i squared delta y. Now, of course, I don't want to just have the volume of this slice. I want to sum up all these volumes, so I want to get an approximate volume by summing, summing up all the volumes from i equals 1 to n of uh, all the volumes, the v sub i. So I'll just write the general formula in there, root 3 over 4 times 1 minus y sub i being squared uh, delta y. Delta y never changes for us. And then if I take the limit as n goes to infinity, I will have the integral from 0 to 1, because the y values range from 0 to 1, of that root 3 over 4 times the quantity 1 minus y being squared dy, right? As n goes to infinity, that delta y gets infinitely thin and becomes a dy. Now at this point, I've rewritten it on my main page here so I can do the rest of my computation. Um, I would like to show you kind of a nice way to do this. Some people will multiply this out. They'll get 1 minus 2y plus y squared. But I want to practice a u sub here because this is a perfect situation for a u sub. I'm just going to let u equal 1 minus y because it seems like it'd be much easier to integrate u squared than 1 minus y squared. If I do that, I know the differential of u is going to be a negative differential of y. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and turn this integral into a root 3 over 4 times the integral of, I'm not going to put in the limits because the limits will have changed, u squared, because that's 1 minus y is u, and instead of a dy, I'll replace it with a du, but I have a negative I'm going to go ahead and throw out front, right, because dy is equal to a negative du. If you don't believe me, just solve this, right, negative du. Okay. Now I'm going to put in my new limits of integration. When uh, y is 0, I get that u was 1. And when y is 1, I get that u is 0. Yeah. OK, so and we have a, a property of integrals here that uh, I could swap the limits. And that will cause the outside to throw a negative out there. So negative times negative will be positive. So I get this beautiful root 3 over 4 integral. 0 to 1. I swap the limits. u squared du. And I know that may seem like a lot of work. It's because I'm talking through it. Had I just done it without kind of talking through it, had I just bowled right through it, it would have been a lot faster and it would have been better than me just multiplying all this stuff out. I would get the same answer, but it's just that I didn't want, I, I would save time by doing this essentially. All right. The antiderivative of u squared is u cubed over 3. I'm evaluating that from 0 to 1. So that's root 3 over 4 times 1 third minus 0, but I'm not really concerned about that. So that's root 3 over 12. There we go. That is the volume of that shape, I guess, or that solid uh, made up of equilateral triangles being stacked upon one another from uh, y equals 0 to y equals 1, okay, on that base. Uh,